Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the U.S. Pain Network. Today's topic is how successful are spinal cord stimulators? First of all, spinal cord stimulation involves delivery of electrical current impulses directly around the spinal cord. Also called neuromodulation, the therapy is used currently by hundreds of thousands of individuals dealing with chronic pain that is not amenable to surgery or has failed surgery. So it's designed to mask pain, it doesn't fix the underlying problem. But if the underlying problem can't be fixed, it's great to have an option, right? But what the, the treatment does is it changes the way that the brain perceives pain signals. Researchers hypothesize that diminished pain occurs related to the gate control theory. And this theory involves non-painful inputs, closing the gates to painful inputs, thereby suppressing pain. So there's a lot of conditions that can benefit from a spinal cord stimulator. Uh, research backs it up for failed back surgery syndrome, which unfortunately occurs in over 40% of all back surgeries within two years, actually. It can provide on average 62 up to 76% relief for back and leg pain, okay? In a study out of neuromodulation in 2013, all the patients in that study said that they would have the procedure again uh, to get some relief. For diabetic and peripheral neuropathy pain, there was a study out of Deaconess in 2014 that showed on average 85% pain relief from the neuropathy and 58% actually had complete return of the sensation that they had lost due to the neuropathy. That is an incredible outcome. An older study in 97 out of neurosurgery showed 80% excellent outcomes for CRPS, uh, RSD. And then a more recent study in 2014 showed 62% excellent pain relief long term for chronic neck pain that was not amenable to surgery. There are some additional conditions that are a little bit outside the uh, uh, FDA approved uses, so it would be considered you know, off-label. Um, angina, peripheral vascular disease, headaches and migraines, even pelvic and testicular pain. Uh, there are some, some case reports looking at abdominal pain as well. Phantom limb pain does well, cancer pain, depending on where the location of the pain is, and post thoracotomy pain syndrome. Let's look at some of these. For migraines, there was a study at a neuromodulation in 2015 that looked at 17 patients over a four-year span for uh, cervical spinal cord stimulation. The pain was reduced by 60% on average, and the median number of days with migraines was decreased from 28 to 9. So excellent outcome. There was a, a small study in um, uh, 2015 looking at occipital nerve stimulation for chronic migraines. This was actually a meta-analysis looking at any possible studies that are out there. Unfortunately, it's a small amount of studies. Um, it did show overall a mean reduction of 2.6 days of headaches per month, but we need larger studies on that. Looking at phantom limb pain, there have been several case reports and small cohort studies. Spinal cord stimulation for intractable pain following the limb amputation. 12 patients over 20 years showed a two-thirds average pain reduction. Uh, looking at when patients have phantom limb pain and ischemia, only three patients in that study, but it did show 50% relief. And then another one looking at four patients in MD Anderson Cancer Center showed over 80% excellent outcomes in four patients. So post thoracotomy pain syndrome, uh, it's a horrific condition, very difficult to treat. Uh, this study just looked, was a case report of one patient but it did show a very successful outcome for post thoracotomy syndrome. It's just tough to deal with. I mean, it really is uh, very sensitive to the touch over the area where the rib is taken out, um, and injections often give very fleeting relief. So thankfully, uh, this may become a great option moving forward. There are some expanding indications as well, such as urinary urgency, frequency retention, incontinence, interstitial cystitis, fecal incontinence and constipation, spinal cord injury, and uh, erectile dysfunction as well. Now, you might wonder about the cost effect in this. These are very expensive devices. Frequently, they're covered by insurance the vast majority of the time. They cost about $25,000. This study looked at 40 patients over five years. The cost of treatment over that time dropped 30% on average for both pharmaceutical and non-pharmaceutical. So a second study actually backed up these results showing that yeah, they're expensive, but also they significantly reduce the cost of care. The technology with spinal cord stimulator implants just keeps getting better. It's amazing what they've been coming out with. Um, 
for instance, rechargeable units. Used to be you had to change the battery every few years. No more. You can actually sleep with a battery um, charger around a belt and uh, just charges overnight. Uh, the newest ones have high frequency, about 10,000 hertz, versus the traditional ones that have 100 hertz. Um, the studies are showing excellent outcomes with these high frequency ones. One thing it does is, you know, normally a spinal cord stimulator will change uh, the way you feel pain. It'll change it to a tingling sensation instead of the pain. But with the high frequency ones, you don't even have the tingling sensation. You just get pain relief, okay? The newest ones have adaptive stimulation. So if you're laying down and you go to a standing position, the older ones might lose coverage because it just didn't know how to react to the change in position. The newest ones adapt to that, so you actually have steady coverage between you know, different positions you might be in. And the newest ones have more programming options. I mean, look at this paddle. You have one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four. I mean, that's 20 different um, diodes. And then can you imagine the amount of programming options based on you know, increasing or decreasing the electricity going through those diodes? It's amazing how many options. And I want to leave you with three reasons that U.S. Pain Network is the go-to for chronic pain treatment with neuromodulation. All the providers that, we, uh, that are in the network um, have amazing credentials and experience. A lot of them are double board certified. They've been doing these for years and years. Uh, and they're very experienced in the latest ones, including the high frequency stimulators. Also including if you have a stimulator and it's failed, then a lot of times you can replace it with one of the high frequency ones and get back to uh, um, amazing activities uh, due to the pain reduction. Convenience, um, our network will do an insurance verification, will help you with travel arrangements and direct access um, to getting you in fast with our providers. And the technology, you know, our providers have been doing these for a long time. So they're well-trained on the latest technology uh, with the top FDA approved devices. Um, and you won't have to settle for uh, uh, you know, 10 years ago technology. So visit us online today at myspinalstimulator.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 866-433-0363. Thank you for watching.